Hey everybody, Jay here. Welcome back to The Homestead. If you're just joining us for the first time, I invite you to subscribe, hit that like button, and leave a comment. My name is Jay. We live on an 18-acre homestead in beautiful New Hampshire, and today we're going to go over how an outdoor wood boiler now, works. I've actually, <laughs> it's funny, a subscriber point, pointed this out to me. I've actually made a lot of outdoor wood boiler videos, but I've never made one on how it actually works. A lot of you know how it works, but some of you are still a little bit questionable on how the plumbing works how, and all that stuff. So today, if you're wondering how an outdoor wood furnace, outdoor wood boiler, whatever you want to call it works today's video is for you all right so here we go guys let's get right to it this is our unit this is our central boiler classic 6048 6048 6048 i got a lot of heat from uh how you actually pronounce it but it's 6048 you can determine however uh the proper pronunciation is but anyways this is our outdoor wood furnace basically how it works is this um if you have oil heat propane heat whether it's radiant baseboard or forced hot air you have one thing in common you need a fuel source whether that is propane electricity oil kerosene this happens to be wood now this machine is obviously outside away from the house we're going to open it in a second i'm going to wait for it to kick on um, but basically what this machine does is there's a water jacket up here this is all this is all stainless this is all steel stainless steel whatever the material is there is a 300 gallon water jacket in here what happens is there's a damper on the door. It might actually go off while we're talking. No, not yet, almost. But anyways, there's a damper on the door that opens and closes, and I'll show a video of that now. Um, I'll attach a little clip here so you can see it opening and closing. But anyways, back to it. Um, that heats a fire up. There's water in here that we need to heat to a range of 170 to 180 so right now this water is at 171 as soon as it hits 169 this damper like i showed you is going to open up and it's going to allow air in it's going to stoke the fire up heat the water up and then it's going to shut off at 180. there's a misconception with these a lot of people think that these machines just this roaring fire all the time 24 7 365 it's not the case this machine this machine cycles just like your heating system in your home your heat kicks on runs shuts off so that's how this machine works as well so now if we open this side access panel here basically it's a supply this is my supply to the house obviously you got your uh, taco pump here and this is your return now we're going to go inside in a second and show you the the plumbing of it and how it works but basically it it makes a big loop you go from uh, this is your feed and this is your return so it creates a cycle. Now let's go inside and show you the receiving end of this. If I didn't mention before, these pipes go down underground into insulated PEX, which is buried below the frost line. It's a big tube full of insulation, runs into the house, and I'll show you that next. All right, friends, here we go. We're inside now, inside the homestead in the basement here. I like my barn door. I made this before the channel. Barn door weighs about 250 pounds. <laughs> All uh, two by tens. But anyways, here we go. Um, we are in the basement. Remember I said that there was insulated PEX running underground? So that's the tube that runs underground under the frost line. As you can see, we're about four or five feet down from the top of the foundation. But anyways, our PEX comes in, takes a 90, goes up and over, over our barn door, and then into, I guess, our mechanical room, if you will. Now, I'm sorry. The lighting isn't too good in here. Let me see if I can get uh let me see if I can get some better light so you can see. Alright, so we got some better lighting for you. So basically this is how it works. The PEX comes in, the top pipe here, runs through our plate style heat exchanger, back out the bottom, and then this is a return out back to the boiler here. Now if you see here, we plumbed in last year or a couple I think it was last year, we plumbed in an inline temperature switch so I could see what the furnace is doing. Um, but anyways, how that works is basically a heat exchanger works like a radiator. So the water from the outdoor wood boiler actually never flows through the house. There's a misconception here, but it actually doesn't. The water from the outdoor boiler is treated. It has anti-corrosiveness in it, uh, in treatment, whatever you want to call it. But it does not run through the house. It runs through the heat style plate, uh, plate style heat exchanger. And then these pipes here are, your, are um, the domestic pipes. These are the outdoor boiler pipes. Basically, the heat travels through here, a consistent loop, and obviously you have inlet coming here of, call it city water, house water, domestic water, running through the plate heat exchanger and then coming out here. Obviously, as you can see, if you follow the plumbing, it gets tied in through our furnace, and then I will show you um, 
our heating zones after. The outdoor wood boiler does our hot water as well. Okay, so our house is equipped with radiant baseboard. Uh, as you can see here, uh, we have num zone number one is the master bedroom. Zone number two is the TV room. Three is the in-law apartment. Four is, the, he labeled it the girls upstairs, but those are the two spare bedrooms now. Number five is the great room. Six here is an extra, no, or actually there's an extra zone here capped. Uh, number six is the water tank and number seven is the floor. We have a heated floor system here. These two pipes here take off, run through little baby heat exchangers below the kitchen floor. But yeah, obviously we have our hot water heater here. Same thing, it all runs off of the outdoor wood furnace here. So I just wanted to give you a look at, a lot of people have four side air with the boilers, but we have radiant baseboard. Seems to work out okay. We actually keep our floor zone open uh, all the time that way we get that kitchen is really warm we get ambient heat all the time coming up from the floor because the machine has plenty of BTUs it's not like we're burning oil we're burning firewood here and we have plenty of energy now in a minute here you're gonna hear that damper door open so as you can hear that damper door just opened now if we open our fire obviously we don't have a fire going yet but I just want to show you, see how you can see air? There's a flap in there that opens and closes. Closes. That's what controls the fire. So now what we're going to do while I got you here, this is the first time we've been out here today, so our fire, be fire needs a little bit of love. So let's rake it. Let's get it going. So my machine came with these really long rakes and hose. This allows you to move the coals around, get the fire going again. As you can see, we're just moving the coals around. And then we're gonna throw some kindling, on, we're gonna throw some logs on there and then it'll get going. All right, so usually what I do, depending on, uh, Depending on where my fire's at, um, I'll open the door, I'll let the coal bed get nice and hot, and then I'll go get my logs. So generally what I do is, we got some, we got some hardwood log, and then I throw in a piece of seasoned pine. A couple more hardwood logs. Piece of seasoned pine. A little bit of snow on it, won't hurt. Pine. Piece of hardwood, piece of pine, one hardwood log, I mean one piece of pine, one hardwood log. Alright, so it's all loaded up. That small load of wood, those uh, two hardwood logs and four pieces of pine, that'll last all day uh, for sure. I won't have to feed this again until probably midnight. But anyways, close the door here. That's going to continue to run, heating up our water jacket. As you can see, our temp's at 169. It'll shot off at 180. Chimney's smoking. All right, everybody. I really appreciate you watching that video. Hope you enjoyed. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, I always answer comments. I get back to, I'll get to the comments eventually. I set time aside to uh, answer comments um, because I believe, truthfully, if you were willing to spend time watching the video and leave a comment, I should obviously pay that back and spend time read your comments and reply i really don't like some of the channels that just don't reply at all to anybody it's like what kind of what kind of relationship is that but anyways appreciate you guys watching let me know what you think if you have any questions i'm here to answer um it's definitely there's pros and cons to these machines but i'm a huge fan of it we inherited here on the homestead so yeah can't really complain i have a ball with it get to run chainsaws collect wood be out in the forest what's wrong with that so anyways appreciate you guys tuning in let me know what you think any questions leave them below and yeah like i always say we'll see you out in the woods here's a little look a few minutes later that pine burns real